Good morning and welcome. Welcome to this time and space that God has called us together in. A time to be in spirit, in praise, and in worship of the God we love so dear. Now, wherever you are, wherever you have been, know that you are welcome here in the presence of our God. Let us join in our opening hymn, Crown with the Richest Crown. Friends, it's good to be here with you this morning, to come into this time and place and be with our God. Not to come in and just worship, but to be in presence and in spirit with our God. As we do so, let us join in our opening call to worship. Make a joyful noise to the Lord. Worship with gladness and singing. God is creator sustainer, keeper, and shepherd. Bless God's name. Enjoy the presence of God. Give thanks and praise. God is sovereign and holy. Bless God's name. Know that God reigns. God's kingdom comes. God is healer, redeemer, restorer, and friend. Bless God's name. Let us join in our 
unison invocation. God who cares, we flourish in your compassion. You search for us and find us. You, Holy One, surround us with the power of your abundant love and utmost care. Be present among us as we praise your name. Bring our burdens and give thanks for all that you are and all that you do. Amen. As we have been called into worship this morning and welcomed, as we've sung together and prayed together, we come celebrating this, the last Sunday of the Christian year, Reign of Christ Sunday. A time where we come in and we end in celebration and joy. Our God calls us not only to give praise and thanks, though, but to be transformed and made new. Let us do so now in our prayer for transformation and new life. Sovereign God, transform us in your image. Your reign is just and righteous. We go our own way and live according to our own will. Make us ambassadors of your kingdom. Let us represent you through words and actions. May we release our need for anything that creates a barrier to loving you and our neighbor. May we know and bear witness that we are all neighbors. Amen. Hear the words of grace. Beloved, you are loved unconditionally by the Everlasting One. The kingdom is yours to embrace and enter with full citizenship. Know that every move toward God transforms you. Every confession of God's sovereignty fortifies you. Every moment in the presence of God restores you. Alleluia. Please join me in the hymn, God Speak That I May Speak. Our first scripture reading this morning comes from the book of Ephesians, the first chapter, verses 15 through 23. Hear the words of Paul. I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love towards all the saints. And for this reason, I do not cease to give thanks for you as I remember you in my prayers. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ and the Father of all glory may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know Him, so that with the eyes of your heart enlightened, you may perceive what is the hope to which He has called you. What are the riches of His glorious inheritance among the saints? And what is the immeasurable greatness of His power for us who believe? according to the working of His great power. God put His power to work in Christ when He raised Him from the dead 
and seated him at the right hand in the heavenly places. Far above all rule and authority and power and dominion, above every name that is named. Not only in this age, but also in the age to come. And he has put all things under his feet and has made him head over all things for the church, which is the body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. Here ends our first reading. Paul's description of Jesus in this passage is wonderful. It helps us to understand what we celebrate today. It's not just the life that Jesus led, but the life that Jesus brought. The life that is sustained not only in our ancestors, but in us and in the future of the church. The people to come by what is done in and through us as we have Christ as the head of our body. As the head of the church, the one who guides, who calls, who moves us to do more and more in a world that thinks it's all-powerful. It is the end-all, be-all of all things. And here we have Paul talking about the greatness of Christ and the way in which God seated him in all authority. That all people would know Jesus' name and what had happened and how powerful our God was to not only have sent Jesus here to be one of us, but then to raise him from the dead and to seat him in a place over all people for the salvation of the world. Now, when we talk about the salvation, what God is going to do in the end, the reconciliation, the redeeming back to God, all that God has created. And then sorting through the refuse and through the good and separating stuff out so that all that is good remains. It's not our job to sort through things yet or ever. Our job is to do the best we can to bring as many as possible to the salvation that Jesus Christ brought to us. The salvation that Jesus taught. His love and hope, his peace and joy that Jesus wanted for all people to have. You'll notice that when Jesus came, yeah, he talked to the religious authorities. He spoke to the congregations. But where was most of his work done? It wasn't done in the church. It wasn't even done through the church. It was done by the power of God out in the world where people lived, where their pains were, where their brokenness was. Jesus went to those places with love and kindness, with joy and healing, with kind words, and all sorts of blessings and gifts. From the feeding of the 5,000 to the healing of the lepers to the woman at the Samaritan well, to the healing of the blind man, those that were lame and deaf, to the raising up of a small child and being brought back to life that she might share life with her family. These were the gifts Jesus brought to people. But Jesus went out into the world to do that. And as Paul is talking to the church at Ephesus, he looks at them and he says, listen, I've heard of your faith. Your faith in the Lord Jesus. And I've heard of your love. Your love for all of the saints. And for this reason, I do not cease to give thanks for you as I remember you in my prayers. Now, there are some very deep 
theological pieces to this. But some things you may want to think about are A, their faith in Jesus. I think we've got that one down. And if you don't, keep coming. Keep learning. Keep joining us. And you will find faith. Love toward all the saints. Now, Paul is very specific when he says all the saints. He is talking about the apostles who are in Israel. He is talking to the apostles that were with Jesus. Peter and the rest of the gang. The ones who sent him out to Asia Minor in order to build churches, thinking he would never get anywhere because the word of God was only meant for those whom the disciples saw as gods. We should stop there for a second. Because Paul did some amazing things in Asia Minor, built some phenomenal churches. And I'm not talking the buildings, I'm talking the people. They met in people's houses. They didn't have buildings like we have today. They met in the homes of various individuals in smaller groups. And they got together in order to do the work of Jesus. So when he says the love towards all the saints, he's talking about the money and the gifts and the respect that these people had for those who were saints in the eyes of God, who were the people working hard to build the church of Christ in Israel. And now they were building it in Asia Minor. And the reason I ask you to stop for a second and think about this is, is that not what Jesus calls us to do today? It's not just about the church here, or the church in Roberts, or the church in Milwaukee, or the church in the United States, but about the church that continues to grow and how we need to have respect not for those who think us, but for those who are spreading that gospel to people who have never heard it. One of the churches that I served got really excited when all of a sudden they had an influx of people. And the influx of people came because a beloved pastor had left the church across town. And the pastor who had been called wasn't doing things the same way. People got disgruntled. So they came over to this church. And they thought, look at how God is growing our church. Really? God hadn't grown the church. They had simply moved from one space to another. These were already faithful. What about those who hadn't heard the word? Those who were out in the streets, the drug addicts, the abusers, the homeless, the hungry, those who had never heard the message of Christ. This is what Paul is talking about. Jesus had called these people to take the word out to those who had not heard it. What an amazing gift as we follow Christ the King. The one who rules over us all because of what God has done. This is the glorious gift that Paul is holding up. And we'll talk more about that as we head into the next section and talk about what this salvation means and how that works for us. Please join me in the prayer that our Savior taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, 
but deliver us from evil. For Thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our second Scripture reading for this morning comes from the Gospel according to Matthew, the 25th chapter, verses 31-46. through 46. Jesus said, When the Son of Man comes in His glory and all the angels with Him, then He will sit on the throne of His glory. All nations will be gathered before Him, and He will separate people one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And He will put the sheep at His right hand and the goats at the left. Then the King will say to those on His right hand, Come, you who are blessed by My Father, Inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you gave me clothing. I was sick, and you took care of me. I was in prison, and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry and gave you food, or thirsty and gave you something to drink? And when was it that we saw you a stranger and welcomed you, or naked and gave you clothing? And when was it we saw you sick or in prison and visited you? And the king will answer him, saying, Truly I tell you, just as you did it to one of the least of these, Brothers and sisters of mine, you did it to me. Then he will say to those at his left hand, You who are accursed, depart from me into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry and you gave me no food. I was thirsty and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger and you did not welcome me. Naked and you did not give me clothing. Sick and in prison and you did not visit me. Then they will answer the Lord and say, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or sick or in prison and did not take care of you? Then he will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. And these will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. Here ends the reading of God's Word. May it have rich blessings on your lives. This passage has been used in so many different ways over the years. Sometimes it's been used in order to uphold people so that they knew that they were righteous. Sometimes it's been used to hold people down because they didn't do things the way the church thought they should do. The way in which Jesus meant it was for people to see what salvation was and what it was that they were being given and called to. You see, Jesus sits down and looks at him and says, it's not yours to judge. When I come, when the Son of Man comes in all his glory and all the angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of glory and all the nations will be gathered around him. And he will separate the people like a shepherd separates sheep and goats. Jesus is going to take care of all this judgment stuff. Not mine to worry about. And thank God it's not. I don't know that I want that job or the responsibility of it, nor do I know that I have the compassion and grace and mercy to do what Jesus is going to do in that judgment time. Jesus goes on, though, to help them to understand what it is they're called to do. What is it that truly makes them righteous or unrighteous? What makes them a part of the family of God or a part of the accursed. He calls them together and says, you know, I was hungry and you gave me food, thirsty and you gave me something. I was naked and you gave me clothing. 
I was a stranger. I was in prison and sick, and you visited me. He's talking about pebbles. And I want to make that very clear to us. See, we spend a lot of time looking at the mountains around us. The mountains of violence, of the poor, of injustice. We look at the mountains and we go, how can we ever do anything about it? I'm just a person. There is nothing I can do to stop all the violence in the world. Lobby for gun control. I can lobby for this. I can go out and start a shelter for abused families. I can lobby for legislation that helps to curb domestic violence. But I can't stop it all. Not just one person. And Jesus looks at him and says, the least of these. They look at him and say, we never saw you hungry or thirsty or, or a stranger. We never saw you sick and in prison or naked. How could we have done any of these things when we haven't seen you? He says, whatever you've done unto the least of these, that are my sisters, you've done. Me. Now that goes both directions, doesn't it? What I've done and what I've not done, or what I've done good and what I've done bad. But it's about what pebble I pick up. Not the mountain, but just the pebble I go up to the top of the mountain to grab and move over there. And if each person grabs a pebble, the mountain starts to move. Now, it's not going to move in a day. It's not going to move in a year. It's not going to move in a hundred years. It will take thousands to change the world. That's what God calls us to do is in our time to pick up our pebbles. I can't lift the mountain, but I can pick up the pebble. Reach out the least of these. But there's two pieces you have to understand here. In order for that to happen, I've got to get out of here and out there. I can't touch those lives unless I've been there. So understand what's happening when Jesus talks to the second group because it's very scary for most of us. As we sit within the buildings, as we sit within our time and we think about how awful those things are, and we preach about how awful those things are, and we worry about how awful those things are. But we do nothing. Though you knew about me, whatever you do to the least of these, you also did not do to me. I can't help the world sitting in here. The world is out there. And it's our job to look at what Paul said and understand that with Jesus Christ as head of the church, we are called to move out into the world. If we are going to follow Christ and Christ's reign, we have to be like Christ. Christ came from the throne to the earth. That was the first move. He walked outside the doors and became one of us. Then, even in that, he couldn't just go outside the doors and holler from the rooftop. He had to go to places that weren't comfortable. He had to go and do things that weren't easy. He had to be places that weren't comfortable and accept the fact that some wouldn't understand, that some wouldn't follow. And that was okay. Did you notice that Jesus didn't chase after them if they said, no, I don't want it? 
The rich man comes to him and leaves after being told what he needs to do. Jesus doesn't chase him down and say, no, wait a second, how come you're not doing what I told you to do? Instead, leaves the seed there for God to He picked up the pebble and moved it to where God had told him to move it. Couldn't make them do God, I make people do anything, but instead to bring what God offers to them. God offers to them. So as we celebrate the reign of Christ today, we celebrate his coming to us. We celebrate his not coming just to the earth, but coming to where we are. walking with us where we are. That is the amazing and beautiful gift that God gives us and then calls us to do the same, to go out to those uncomfortable places. And we don't have to move the whole mountain, but just grab a single pebble and take that pebble and move it to where God is calling us to go with it. May the God who called you here today enlighten you and support you, fill you, encourage you, and give you a spirit that makes you want to go out into the world, to the places where people are, and take the gift of God to each and every one that you meet. God's blessings on you all. And all God's people said, Amen. Please join me in our hymn. Rejoice, give thanks, and sing. My friends, our God is generous in all that we are given and continues to support us, continues to bless us, and blesses us in a very important way by inviting us to be just as generous, to give back of what we've been given. Let us do so now in our invitation to generosity.
In Ephesians 1.18, the Apostle Paul says that you may know what is the hope to which he has called you. What are the riches of his glorious inheritance among the saints? God's gifts cannot be limited to the material, although they include the material. God's riches exceed our hopes and expectations when we recognize the glory of the kingdom. Let us acknowledge the reign of God as we share in the abundance of his glorious inheritance and return a portion to support the ministries of Christ's church in the world and among the community of believers. In these moments of silence, make your vows as to what you will give and follow through with them. Please join me in prayer. Gracious God, thank you for the gifts we have and the blessings of sharing. Use our gifts for your glory and to meet the needs and hopes of your kingdom. Amen. My friends, may the God who called you here today bring you hope, show you the way, and continue to call and bless you as you reach out in ministry to the world. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May he lift his countenance upon you and give you peace. Please join me in our closing hymn. Brothers and sisters, I'm glad you were able to be here with us today. And it's my hope and prayer that something here has touched you in a way 
that inspires you to go out into the world, that lifts you up, that helps you to consider other possibilities in the world. And we ask for your help as we continue this mission. First, pray for us. Pray that we would have the resources and the wisdom to continue the work God is calling us to do and to discern what work that is. Then, if you haven't done so already, in a few moments, there will be some buttons that come up on the screen. One will be a cross with a green cloth on it. Please click on it and let us know who has visited us, because that's our subscribe button. Then, if you feel so called and moved, hit the Donate Now button and give as God has put upon your hearts to do. Every gift you give, no matter how big or how small, goes back into our communities in order to touch the world, in order to bring to those who do not have it this message of hope and peace. Through ministries like this, our food cupboard, our youth ministries, our outreach programs, all the various things that make up the many, many hours that are given here to reach out to God's people with love and care. I thank you in advance for all that you're going to do, for all the ways in which you reach out to God, and you remain in my prayers always. Go in peace, my